The message today is communion for sound health. Communion for sound health. Communion for what? Sound health. Health is so vital that if it's touched, everything in your life is touched. That's why you must preserve it and guide it jealously. Jesus came to save us and make us physically and spiritually sound, mentally sound. He, he saved us and he came to make us physically and mentally sound. Sound health is our redemptive package in Christ. But it's accessible through knowledge. Through what? It's available but accessible through knowledge. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it said, according, to, according as his divine power had given unto us all things, how many things? Including sound health, that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. He, he said he has given us how many things? All things, but they are accessible through knowledge. One provision for sound health is made available in the communion, the Holy Communion. If you have ever been sick in life, you want to enjoy sound health. When a man is sick, as little as this finger is, if there's any pain on your finger, it will hit your head. Every discomfort will come to an end in your life. Amen. What is the Holy Communion? It is the flesh and blood of Jesus. The holy communion is the flesh and blood of Jesus. We will be dissecting the flesh and then we will go to the blood. Number one, the flesh. What does the flesh stand for? So don't just take one bread as snacks. You are not coming to take snack in church. Are you hearing me now? Or snacks at home. Someone will just take it and say, I'm taking snacks. If you take it snacks, it becomes consumium. What does the flesh stand for? A. It is like the rod of Aaron that swallowed up the magician's rod in Pharaoh's palace. The flesh is like the rod of Aaron that swallowed up the magician's rod in Pharaoh's palace. That whosoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life. So the serpent is who? Jesus. Now, listen carefully. And Jesus said, this is my what? Flesh. Is, are you getting it clear? So, the rod is who? Jesus. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1, where we read, and John 1 1. Now, if the rod is Jesus, and Jesus is the serpent, that means if I take his flesh, one of his flesh, and I have all the magical serpents, you remember? Cancer? Name them. Anything in my body is given to serpents. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I don't need more than one communion flesh to eat them up. I mean, understand the logic. I can make it. Can you get it clear? So if, even if you have blindness, cancer, name everything eating up your body. All you need is one rod, which is the, the meal. Is that true? So if I take that one rod, what will happen? It will eat up. How many can see it with faith? Can you see it? How many can see it? It will eat up everything eaten up my body. Is that true? So me, as I take off his, as I partake of his flesh, the rod, Jesus himself, whatever is eating up my flesh, that is my body right now, with this one rod, the flesh of Jesus, it will eat up every magical serpent, in my body. Pray for yourself in one minute in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself in one minute. As I partake of the flesh of Jesus, everything eating up my body, pains cancel. Today, the one rod eat them up. Swallow all of them in the name of Jesus. Eat up cancer. Eat up HIV. Eat up sickle cell. Eat up every disease. Go ahead. Everything eating me up must be eaten up. I 
you speaking to God from your heart? In Jesus' mighty name. So as you eat the flesh of Jesus, it will swallow up every discomfort and discomfort in your physical system in the name of Jesus. Right now, I command whatever God did not plan to you right now be swallowed up. He said, I'm the living breath. John 6, 51. Which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread. So, what you're taking is the very flesh of who? Jesus. B. And it's also like the meal Elisha used in neutralizing the poison in the pot of pottage. As it is also like the meal Elisha used in neutralizing the poison in the pot of pottage. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 39 to 41, there was arm in the pot, and Elisha did something. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild girls. Is la fool? And came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou men of God, there is dead in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. Take note, there's what? And he said, bring me meal. That's bring me the communion. And he cast into the pot, and he said, pour out for the people, that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. Your stomach can be likened to a biological pot. Is that true? What you eat is not what you give out. Now, so many of you have been poisoned. Sometimes you take, look, there are cases where people take drugs, and the drug disorganizes the whole of their system. Instead of healing the, drug, the person, the person becomes another problem. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Some of you mistakenly have been taking things that have destroyed your system. It has poisoned the whole system. But with the miracle meal, every poison in your system shall be neutralized. He said there was arm in the pot. The moment he cast the meal, it neutralized it. Is that true? I've seen people take, there was a time someone took food poisoning and almost the person's life was at danger. I said, give the communion straight. And that was the end. I've shared this testimony before of a young boy, the only child, not only son, only child of the parents. This boy was taken to hospital because he had serious, whatever you call fever or whatever. All of a sudden, they gave him overdose. This boy's tongue was coming out, physically coming out. The mother, seeing that the boy was dying, Carried him from the hospital, the only son, only child. The father, child, mother, the only child. They ran down here. And we prayed from afternoon till evening. This boy, every 30 minutes, his tongue would come out to choke him. Every prayer was done. I now shifted. I said, lie him down on the altar. I moved away. I said, God, what do I do? He said, they gave him overdose. Give him the communion. He said, that is the effect of drugs that they give him. I just said, bring the communion. The broker has opened his mouth. As we put the communion in his mouth, hmm. That was it. The communion neutralized the effect of the drugs. I've not seen where they give children drugs and they be, like, they be like a pestile. Doctors will never tell you that they made a mistake. They will never tell you. A sound child they will make a mistake. You know, if they make a mistake, they hide it. They will never tell you it was a mistake. There are many people who have been rendered useless, who are sound, they took to the hospital, and a mistake was made. And the person, instead of coming back well, they come back with a problem. An architect that I know very well moved with his two legs to the hospital in Port Harcourt. I won't call the hospital. Entered because he was feeling somehow. The moment they gave him the injection, he became paralyzed. He had stroke on the spot. So the mistake must have been made. I know they must have put the, must have put the injection in the wrong area. He went with his legs, so drove himself. He said, look, I'm feeling one kind. The moment they get the injection, he had stroke. One side of his body. 
we prayed for him to be back. <laughs> but will they tell you? They said, no, it's, uh, they will also use another English to cover their mistake. <laughs> that, that is poison. That's what? That's poison. They brought two children from the United States. Two of them, young boys in their early 20s. They said, these children are sound. All of a sudden, they are being, since we took them, to, they are being like, you know when children are being like, uh, you know, no, you can't, it's not toxin, but you know, how do I call it? Do, medically, they will have the time. When the person is, is looking at you, but it's not co- co- coherent, coherent. It's just moping at you like mumu. They flew them from America because they are tired. They said, we came, their father was just almost crying. We came, maybe they're in church now. So I don't know what to do anymore. I brought them because I don't know what to do. We live in the United States. And life is... The boys were looking at me like this. I said, how are you? <laughs> they must have given them one wrong prescription. You think problems are only in Nigeria? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So, what the communion does is to neutralize what? Poison. So, you know, some of you too, outside now, some of you smoke, 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 before you became born again, that if you don't <coughs> smoke, I'll come out. <laughs> if they hit your chest, it can come out, like winter, winter smoke. <laughs> and that thing has affected your system. Am I talking? Now, whatever poison you have taken, or they gave to you, I command it to realize the name of Jesus. I repeat with authority. Any poison you have, t- look, you have not noticed what I'm talking. My wife has passed through such long ago. I was preaching here when it came and called me, say, "It's well with Mama. She's dying." That time, all of you have not gone. They they gave her a wrong prescription. I think I don't know what I'm talking. They came, gave her wrong dose. My wife, I was gone. They came to me. They look at my eyes. The I was preaching. They, I said, "Go and pray for her." When they pray, pray, they say. You get to leave this thing. Come. When I went, my wife, I was stunned. I was saying, What details like this? I said, Jesus! <sighs> so, <sighs> now she's alive. It's God's, God's mercy. Now, listen, I don't know what wrong prescription or wrong thing you've been taking as poison. After the communion today, it will be neutralized. <laughs> In case you took poison mistakenly by yourself or by any means, I think in case there are some drugs they will give you, the side effect is so much that they won't tell you. I have not seen people that give drugs, they will not tell you the things that follow the drugs. And anything you have taken that has affected your system, I decree as you take up the communion today that you will be neutralized in the name of Jesus. As you partake of the flesh of Jesus this hour, in case there be anything moving your body as object, I command it to arise immediately. Amen. Every food poisoning, every sickness, everything that has affected you, it will be arise in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are a believer, say amen like a believer. Amen. So it has power to destroy virus. To destroy what? And viruses causes discomfort, pains, and inconvenience. Is that true? It destroys every form of poison responsible for blindness, deafness, stomach disorder, heart diseases, HIV, AIDS. Do you know diabetic people even go blind? Today, everything that makes this bring discomfort affect your body. As you partake of the flesh of Jesus this hour, I command your liberty to be instant. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me, people of God. You all know the story of COVID and Ebola. When COVID Ebola came, it was so deadly. So what? That it was ravaging African countries. Liberia, Nigeria had got in. And then it got to Nigeria. Came to Port life. And when it got to Port it was in an hospital where our members were. A medical doctor and a part-time pastor now was also working in that hospital. Not knowing that the medical doctor who had um, Ebola came to the hospital. Ebola was more deadly than COVID. COVID at least stays for 
People battle it and come out. Ebola is a time bomb. When it came that time to the one day, the person is gone. It was like a time bomb. When he, this doctor went with his bare hands to touch his colleague who was Ebola. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was on a dead sentence, a dead rule. I had no idea. I didn't know that somebody has been attacked. The nurse, the doctor, the cleaner were all members of this church. And three of them had primary contact with the doctor, with that of Ebola. And then another elderly woman was with the doctor in the same room in the hospital who had it, contracted it by contact, and 20 something of their relations, in laws, all of them, when they were so, they were kept what you call it, quarantine, or what is it, quarantine? They quarantined them. They were in a the place. So they sent me a message. They said, Sir, we know you're a man of God. We are not members, but will you allow us to die? That was a sad sentence. They said, please don't allow us to die. To something of us cannot die at the same time. I stayed in my room. I said, God, what do I do? No kill. No kill. I said, Lord, there must be an answer. If you are here, 20 something persons can die. Lord, what do we do? What do I do? As I was moving in my room, two, two in the afternoon, he just said to me, John 6 54. He said, Give them the communion. I said, Call them. I said, Any way you get biscuit, get. Any way you can get coke or malt, get. I said, Get it just where you are because they got it. I said, Read this scripture. So, call long story short, I ministered to them. They stood on this altar. The whole to the suffering of them, free. But that is not a touching testimony. The most second one was the medical doctor who had primary contact with him. He did not even fever. WHO said, it, look, at it, look at it here. So you don't say, look at, the, look at the medical certificate here. <laughs> now, the doctor did not have it. It was John 6, 54. When COVID came, that was the only scripture I used for all. And not one person died who had COVID. That we use this scripture for. Now listen. Listen to this scripture. John 6, 54. Don't say I know it. If you know it, it will show. Anything not producing, you have not known it. You cram it. You can't have revelation of God's word. Before I quoted it, didn't I know it? Knowing is not the same thing as insight. Even the devil knows the Bible. After what he quoted Jesus to Jesus' Bible, but he didn't understand it. Understand is even from just knowing. Is anybody who doesn't know about tithe? Everybody doesn't know about tithe, true? Do you understand it? No. Is anybody who doesn't know Matthew 8 17 in this church? He took my favorite. But some of you now were sitting down now. Even the took you quoted. He said, What did they pay me? What did they pay me? <laughs> so <laughs> understanding is what? Different. It's not just knowing scriptures, it's understanding scriptures. Now, look at it. Who so eateth my flesh? This is a who so eateth bread. Jesus didn't call it bread. He said, who so eateth my flesh? What makes it his flesh? Your faith. What makes it his flesh? Your faith. Who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood? He didn't call communion bread and wine. He said, who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. I will explain here. Had Eternal life means have my life. Have what? Eternal life is God's kind of life. He said, if you take off his flesh and his blood, you have what? His life. Let me ask you a question. Can you have his life and can't sustain your body? Can you have his life and HIV AIDS stay in your body? Can you have his life and diabetes stay in your body? Can you have his life? When I call your sickness or not, that sickness they call the name. Can you still have his life and have that sickness in your body? Do you believe? Do you believe? Now, say with me, I can't have his life and sickness at the same time. Say it with faith. Say it in a minute. Say it like a child of God. Stand up in one minute. With a holy anger. He says, I partake of the flesh and blood of Jesus this moment. Whatever is not in Christ that is in me, I Cause you in the name of Jesus, and I'm free right now. Are you now? Now go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus mighty name. You know what? It transmits the reality of eternal life into your mortal body. That's what comes. It transmits what? Now, everyone that partakes of the flesh and blood of Jesus, as the communion transmits into your body eternal life, whatever is not in Jesus, I toss it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Cancer can't be in him. Pain can't be in him. Whatever is not in Christ that is in you, I command it destroyed in the name of Jesus. Listen, our pastor in the United States here, a month plus, fell in the bedroom. Here, the rib was broken. <laughs> Medically, they told him they can't do surgery because with his age and everything, that he needs a supernatural healing. They told him no surgery. Not pain, the rib was broken. They went for scan. They, they told him, ah, your rib is broken. <laughs> that is the rib broke. <laughs> the pain was unbearable. And he went in the United States. He said, he lives there, so he won't say that there's Nigeria. They said, they can't touch you. They can't open you up because hey, where it is, is very dangerous. So just believe that you'll be healed. And we prayed for him. This same communion of flesh. He went for a scan here today. He said, the broken rib cannot be found. <laughs> they can't see the broken rib. Just the human body, small, little, slight pain. Are you going to sit down? But the broken rib, no more, it's not there. No rib is broken. <laughs> Are you going to now? How do you explain that? Because when his flesh comes to your flesh, he gives you his own rib. I may not understand what I'm saying here. Whatever is damaged in your body will be replaced now. So if he gives you his body, his heart is what you have. His kidney is what you have. Are you getting me? Whatever is in you right now, receive his own part in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking with understanding. The Jesus himself now give you his body in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not in Jesus that is troubling your body lives instantly in the name of Jesus. Let me use a physical illustration. You know, when a person has kidney problem, they say go for kidney transplant. Somebody donates his kidney to you, you live with that person's kidney. Is that true? Now, Jesus is donating his body to you. There, the communion table. So, you are taking the very body of Jesus. Do you understand? I don't understand it. Can you have his body and your body break down? Now, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive via the communion table eternal life in the name of Jesus. That life cannot be destroyed. That life cannot be afflicted by sickness. That life, in case you are not sick, just no sickness will not come. Because you, Jesus cannot be in you and sickness afflict you. So everyone who takes the communion today, you will live a sickness free life. Dead will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. All you do is to take it by faith. By what? Faith. You may be seated. John 6, 50, 51. He said, this is the bread we come down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not what? That does not, when they say not die, you know what the Bible is saying? It's not saying that you will not sleep at old age, but it's saying that till your time on earth is over, none of your organs will pack up. That is, you, no, you can't hear that kidney failed. Heart failed. Blood, this. No. That till you sleep at old age, you only sleep and then continue your journey. But it will not be told that sickness made you to die young. No. He said, I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live what? That means you will live forever. You will only reach the old age when you want to go and just sleep and go. You will live, it will not be hard that, oh, the man died because his kidney failed. The man died because, no, 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 no. It will never happen. And I said, and the bread which I give is my flesh. In case you are confused. And the, I'll give, which I give for the life of the world. He said, in case you are confused, this is my flesh. This is what? Now listen. <laughs> we were in Pennsylvania, United States of America. 
And I was eating 50-51 fresh. Very fresh. That early morning I was just studying. And light came from scriptures. No, you know, sometimes God will allow you to read scripture, seeing what is ahead of you. And then somebody sent text to my wife, a pastor. Said to my wife that he's in the hospital at the point of death. My wife came to me and said, this pastor is in the hospital, critical. So I called him. I said, pastor, what's wrong? To talk was a problem. I said, pastor, he couldn't even talk, no energy. He said, sir, it's a heart condition. That's packed up, and I'm giving up to die. And I said, look at John 6, 50, 51. He couldn't talk. He's in the church here. He couldn't talk. I said, look at him there. He couldn't talk. I said, pastor, just use your last strength. Whatever strength you have, just look at the scripture. He has his own ministry. I said, just look at the scripture. Just put your eyes on the scripture. To talk was a problem. Doctors have said, you know when someone wants to die, that's where they breathe. He was already giving that kind of breath. Hmm. Hmm. I said, use your last energy and look at the scripture. At that point, I said, just look at the Bible. He looked at the scripture. I said, now listen. I now read the scripture. And I said, the name of Jesus, death has been destroyed by this communal table. He said, hmm. I said, take it. I'm not saying gradually, on the spot, death left. He regained consciousness, was discharged the same day. A man given up to die by heart complications. That same day, another pastor had food poisoning through food. Are you going to sit down? Not everything we talk. I had that kind of problem. Don't, don't be buying food anyhow. They bought bole for me, and <laughs> I like bole a lot. But the oil, I don't know what kind of oil, when I see the oil they use. <laughs> After I ate the bole, <laughs> After I ate the bole, I told her, you will not buy roadside bole again. Lie, lie. I don't eat it again. After I ate the bole, <laughs> dead came face to face. <laughs> It was food poisoning from the bole. I don't know the kind of tomatoes. No, they mix anything out to sell. My stomach did like the king, 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 king. All the person person would die that night. I said, bring communion. It was communion I used to come out of that situation. Now listen, that's, that's eternal life. He said, you shall live. Now listen, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, everyone threatened with dead, as you partake of his flesh and of his blood, I declare you free instantly. He said, I am the living bread. We can have a man will eat of me and not die. Say to me, I will not die. Say it with faith. As I partake of the flesh of Jesus, of the blood of Jesus, dead you are destroyed. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it again. I command every death threat in anyone to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Either eat my blood, drink my blood, dwell it in me and I in him. Verse 56. So there's divine exchange. There's divine what? He gives you his life. Take your own life. It's like they say blood donation. <laughs> blood uh, transfusion. Is that true? Then number two, the blood. Number one is the flesh. Number two, the blood. The blood of Jesus is the answer to every satanic assault. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the words of their testimonies. Revelation 12 verse 11. The life of the flesh is what? In the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. So the very life of Jesus is what? In the blood. So when you take the blood, you are taking the very life of Jesus. Now, in Zechariah chapter 9, 11 and 12. It says, as for thee also. By the blood of the covenant, I have sent for the prisoners out of the feet where there is no water. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even to do I declare, I will render double unto you. So in case you have been held down, there are some sicknesses and problems. You go to hospital, they can't see it. You are dying in silence. The doctors tell you no problem. But you are just getting 
down. And you know this thing is not normal. Okay, like the man I said, his brother wanted to kill him. He was going to hospital. They were doing physiotherapy or whatever therapy you call it. But the therapy was not working because it was a demonic attack. He didn't say it's a lumbar spondylosis or whatever you call spondylosis or small. They gave him lumbar spondylosis or what is spondylosis? And <laughs> it, they were spondylosis anyhow. But the, the problem was beyond lumbar spondylosis. Beyond that, they didn't see Satan in the microscope. They were giving him so go for physio. He was going for physio. The physio was not working because the, he won't see a quenzu in microscope. Where have you seen Satan or oh, inside microscope issue or whatever they call him? You can't see him inside lab. Lab does not pick Satan. Where will you see Satan inside lab? He was dying. He said, Papa, my business was going down. My body was deteriorating. But when you did vengeance prayers, that was the day I was free. As my brother went to, as he was free, his brother went to hospital and died in the process. Then he, <laughs> now, the moment the brother went to hospital, he was free. There are some things that I want you. Have you not gone to hospital before? They say, um, based on this physiological analysis, plus they will give you baby grammar and they will put glasses like this and look at them <laughs> and then they write. Ba they are, sometimes they even say this before you die. They say, now, based on our investigation, you say, hey, this man. But if I tell you, you'll be shocked. Doctors are the ones who fear most. If a doctor is sick, they do like this. Just be telling the doctor. Injection, they, they even get scared of injection. They say, <laughs> but what they want to give you is a common sit here. Let's talk about <laughs> But if you see doctors when they are sick, you say, what is wrong with you now? You are the three people. Yeah, you're doing like this. <laughs> In fact, if a doctor they tell him he has cancer, he has already died. They analyze the dead before the cancer even go to. There's a cancer we need to stage this, stage this. Okay. I told you how I saw my classmate with a partial uh, Parkinson. Compassion well on my inside. As a medical consultant, compassion well. He couldn't hold it, he was just doing like this. I said, This is not normal. And the Holy Ghost said to me, It is not normal. They cannot be treated physically. I heard when I was ministering, he said, Pray for him. This is not physical. You know, from village, they must have just said, a consultant, we we'll see how you do surgery. <laughs> you know, even now, they are very scientific. It's not like before they say, just kill him. No, now they look at you. If the boy is very intelligent, they not make him like mumu. <laughs> so that, uh, like those boys they brought now from America. The, the father said, these boys have never come out low in their grace. So somebody from somewhere must have done like this, tumbo, tumbo, boom. <laughs> Wickedness is real, though. It's real. But the blood has power to destroy wickedness. How many know that? Say, Satan, by the blood of Jesus, every of your attack on my life, get up, command it destroyed now by the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray, Satan. Jesus, mighty name. In case you have been anywhere, the devil has held anyone down to destroy. The blood of Jesus lose you. Amen. Set you at liberty. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you, you agree with me. You want to stop a particular habit like drug addiction. You find yourself struggling with it. But today, he said, by the blood you have to bring you out of the pit where there's no water. Anyone who the enemy has held to destroy I command your liberty instant. Yeah. That 
addiction. You don't like taking drugs. I don't mean physical drugs. I'm talking about like cocaine and heroin and all those bad drugs. You see yourself taking them. So people, you talk to them, talk to them, they feel bad. But after a while, they say, hmm. they're always high. It's not that they like it. They hate it, but they, just, they can't come out of it. To take the blood of Jesus, rescue you right now. Amen. Bring you out of that pit of that evil habit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, number three. The communion destroys spiritual blindness. Spiritual, what destroys what? It destroys spiritual blindness. That's why I close. In Luke 24, 30, 31, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. He took what? And their eyes were open. That eyes is not physical eyes. It's talking about understanding. It's talking about what? They were with him, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. He was walking with them. They did not know his what? Have you not seen people you explain Bible to them? They can't understand. He said, this is what the Bible says. He said, no. So communion has part to destroy spirit. Uh, what? Blindness. You know, Thomas said, this is what the Bible said. No, 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 no. Bible did not say so. He said, who is blind? Don't think blindness is seen as well. In Isaiah 42 verse 19. He said, who is blind? But my servant. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. So the communion opens your understanding of God's word. Of what? If you have understanding, you can't struggle. Will you struggle? No, you can never struggle if you have understanding. It is the knowledge of the truth that guarantees triumph. You can't know it and not. Are you going to say now? I was talking with my mentor yesterday. I said, somebody to be under your teaching and still fail. Something's wrong. They say, my son, you don't understand what I'm teaching. We are just talking. Say, many don't understand it. They don't, yes, they hear it, but they don't what? Understand. So many, there are people who, when you lack understanding, you just, but communion has power to do what? Destroy understanding. And with adequate insight into God's word, you will just be in command. Through, we are in command of prosperity. Through, in the midst of hardship. Why? Understanding. Are you getting me? How can we be in command of wealth in the midst of hardship? So understanding. It's understanding. So someone says things are tough. Do we say you yeah, are tough anywhere? No, we are in command of wealth. Irrespective of any economic meltdown. It's not enough to talk about the communion. You must understand what it takes before you can enjoy the virtues it carries. Say by the communion table. The eyes of understanding. Be open. Every form of spiritual blindness, I command it destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Two women had cancer. Life story. Two women, and the two of them sat down about two years ago, and I kept the two of them, stage four, stage four cancer. One cancer of the cervix, one cervical cancer, one cancer of the breast. They sat down, and I put the communion. The moment I was talking to them, I told the pastors, I said, this person will leave. This may not leave. I said, this person has understanding. I just saw understanding grew. The other person was saying, yes, yes, but the person could not. I said, we need grace for this person to survive. The same teaching, but two of them understanding was not the same. The same teaching. The same, they were just sitting. I said, now, Jesus, John 4, 6, 64. As I was thinking, that person's faith rose. I could see that the person was understanding what I was talking. One walked out of cancer. One did not survive. So understanding matters a lot. It's not enough to hear God's word. What the communion does is to open up your heart. They were with Jesus, but they did not know him. And who is Jesus? The word of God. So you can even sleep with the Bible and not understand the Bible. But what the communion does is to open your word. Understand. And today beginning, your understanding will open. Amen. I say understanding will open. Amen. Rise to your feet. You have almost prayed your prayers. Is that not true? Amen. Number one prayer, but ask God to give you what? Understanding of his word. He said, give me understanding and I shall live. Psalm 119, 144b. Give me what? First prayer of the Lord, as I partake of your flesh and blood, give me understanding and I shall live. Give me what? Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. As I partake of your flesh, I give me understanding. Give me understanding 
as a partaker of flesh and blood. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We are already in Luke 24, 30, 31. You already read it just now. You are going to ask God to open your eyes to see the things Jesus has freely given to you. To see what? You ask God to open your eyes to see the things Jesus has freely given to you. Everything freely given to you. Open my eyes to see them. We are already, you are combined, can combine Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to this same scripture. Lord, whatever you give to me, redemption, may I see it from today as a particular of flesh and blood. Go ahead and pray that prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, pray for sound health through the communion table. Pray for what? John 6, 51 and John 6, 54. Sound, that's a, sound what? That is, you are not going to break down in your body. No more what? Lord, as I partake of your flesh and blood, I must not break down. I will live like you. Are you going to answer now? Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, none of us will break down. Amen. No sickness in the world will affect us. Amen. There shall no evil fall us in any plague come near what? Our dwell. No matter the plague, it will never touch any of us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can't be a partaker of his divine nature until you are born again. If you are not born again, if you like, carry the whole bread put in your mouth take the whole blood drink all it will not produce anything you must be born again pray this prayer after me wherever you are say after me Lord Jesus come into my life I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me now with my mouth I declare you the Lord over my life thank you Father for saving me in Jesus name. If this message blessed your life or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus two three four eight one one four seven zero nine five seven zero or plus two three four nine zero four three zero three zero seven one one. We are here to listen and support you. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.